So I started to sketch this character and I suddenly thought I should be filming this really, shouldn't I? This might be a useful tool for somebody to watch. Uh, first time I've been sketching this size for a while, so I was a bit tentative about doing this. Didn't know how I was going to colour it. I thought maybe I'd use paint markers um, and pencil, mixed media, which is what I've been doing recently on other surfaces and working smaller. And um, and then I thought, no, I'm going to see if I can do uh, alcohol markers and pencil. And if I need to throw on some paint and all, then I will. So uh, with that, I set about sketching. Now, I have sketched a sort of crocodile character before, <clears throat> a few times. But I wanted this one to be slightly different. I wanted his, his face to be a bit slimmer. I wanted a slimmer face. I've done quite fat-faced alligators in the past. So I thought, just make it a bit slimmer. Also, I wanted to slap uh, a big Kangol on him, like I have there. Uh, and a pair of glasses. And that affects everything when it comes to colour, of course. Uh, as you'll see in uh, in the next video I do. When I begin to colour him. I'm only going to do the pencil sketch in this video. You're going to see me do the full pencil sketch. So, um, this is me trying to get the pers I can't even speak it. perspective on the glasses. So, it's, um, it's tricky this. It's really tricky. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that I nailed it even in the final one. But it doesn't really matter. As long as you get it as near as, as, near as you possibly can. So, um, at the moment, what I'm doing in the sketch, the sketch, I, I like to keep it nice and loose, if possible. Keep it nice and loose, because it's got to be changed. Uh, it's that thing you've got to remember when you're sketching, which is everything must be able to be changed. And it's going to be about lots and lots of little, little tiny adjustments. <clears throat> so don't get too wedded to anything. Get ready to do a lot of rubbing out. Um, I've I've edited this video so that you've um, you've not got to sit through loads of me banging my fist on the table trying to think where I'm going to go next with it, or just loads of rubbing out, or loads of thinking. Not that I do that much thinking when I'm drawing, but you know, I've edited that stuff out basically, so you don't have to sit through that. If you get really really bored, just flip through anyway. <clears throat> That's what YouTube is for, isn't it? So anyway, as you can see, I'm rubbing this out. I'm looking at that, thinking that's not big enough. So I've done that nostril, you see. It's not big enough, so I'm doing this one now. Doing it much bigger, because it's nearer to us, you see. It's nearer to the camera. So it needs to be bigger. It needs to be larger. It can't be the same size as the one on the opposite side. It has to be bigger, because it is nearer to us. Um, Yeah, all this stuff that I'm doing now around the chin and everything, I'm just trying to make it look three-dimensional. Trying to make it look like a solid object. Uh, colour will help, but do not re rely just on colour to give it three dimensions. No, you want to you be able to look at your pencil drawing and go, yeah, I can see that in, in three dimensions there. That's going to work. That's what you want. You want to be able to see a, a three-dimensional object. Uh, Sort of slightly popping out the uh, off the paper. If you can't, you've got to go back and rework it. You know, I don't start inking until I'm I'm happy with it. Sometimes I think I've said this before. Sometimes I I adjust when I'm inking, and um, most of the time I ink what is what is there pretty much. I don't want to be taking massive risks with ink. The problem with ink, the great thing about paint, as I've said before, is you can go over paint, whether it's on a wall or whether you're using paint markers, just go over it. It's fantastic. If you use spirit markers, alcohol markers, that kind of stuff, they're a lot less forgiving, and you better get it right. Because if you if you don't, a lovely finish that you've achieved can be ruined very, very quickly. I came very close a couple of times on this because I've got used to working in paint. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all made those mistakes anyway. Uh, you'll you'll know them when they happen. 
you want to kick your own head in but anyway anyway this one seems to be going quite well at sketch stage sometimes I can't think I should just leave it at sketch stage just leave it as a pencil drawing or pencil it in heavily no just heavy pencil it or whatever but I can never really leave it alone big old Kango on him here I'm never a great fan of, of great big areas of, of what's gonna have to be flat color um, I should have I should have done more in the colouring. Anyway, that's later. That is later. You're going to see that in a different video. So I've put that tooth in there, you see. And I'm looking at that, looking at it now, thinking, I should have, should have probably redone that. So I'm redoing all this cheekbone now. Get that tooth up there, a bit closer to that, so there's a bit more space around his mouth. Don't want it to be all crowded, you know. Otherwise, that's that's bad composition if you get it all crowded. Composition is something you've got to think about all the time. Um, I didn't do too badly on this one actually, composition-wise. Uh, some of it's a bit could be better. Uh, those glasses I'm looking at now, thinking uh, that should have been. I could I could have done a better perspective on them. But you can't have everything right. So what am I doing here? Uh, I'm, it's quite tricky this under his chin bit and I'm deciding as well whether I give him some sort of crocodile scales up the back of his head or no uh, in the end I did but I did it with colour instead you'll see you'll see when I do it on the uh, on the time lapse because I've got a full time lapse coming where you can watch me colour it um, and I'm also doing a, a bit of a colouring tutorial in the next one where I do his glasses which is quite interesting, should be quite interesting it was the one, one that's been requested anyway so now I'm just looking where to get his hand in earlier there and, and giving up and come back to the glasses I'm still, so, so I'm narrowing the glasses there, that's good you know, because they were too fat they were too fat, it wasn't working, that is a good compromise could have probably gone even more but you know, that's a good compromise just there Gonna need a tighter angle on it. There you go at the top. Tighten the angle down. That's much better, much better than it was. Good. <coughs> I'm reasonably pleased with that. Pleased enough, you know. I wish I'd redone that cheekbone though. That cheekbone is not great, but you know. Oh well, you can't have everything. Cracking on with the zip gonna give him a nice fat feeler zip that's not quite the right angle I'm gonna come back to that later in fact that is a good I think that's a good example of me correcting something when I inked it because I didn't resketch it as far as I can remember I, I, I redid that in the inking like I say always a risk I don't recommend it because if you uh, if you make a foul up you've got a well, you've got to use white out or something. That's too long. Because you'll see what I want. You see, compositionally, you'll see what I'm after. I'm going to do letters underneath him as well. I'm going to do some letters and, I'm, and you know, a few bubbles and bits and pieces. And he's going to be holding a marker. So, so all this, all this here is going to be lost, basically. So it needs to be nice and short. I don't want it too. There you go. I'm just rubbing it out now. So uh, that's nice and truncated, as I say. It is worth taking the time at this stage just to get it as right as you possibly can. Because then you can see it. You can see it in proportion to everything else. Compositionally, you can see if it sort of, if it, if everything fits, sits nicely in the space. And it's a pain, you know, honestly, it is a pain when you think, oh, do you know what, I've had it on a wall, you know, I've had it on a wall, you look at it and you think, oh, God, I've just spent a lot of time doing that, and it's not right. Listen, go back and do it again, otherwise you'll be looking at the thing afterwards just going, that wasn't good. I should have just gone back and done it again. So I'm uh, I'm sketching the, uh, the hand in now. Decided in my head uh, what hand I want in there. So he's, uh, he's going to be 
holding a marker, a big fat marker on his left hand. So I'm going to get that in here, sketch that in very quickly. And there we go. Now, unfortunately, I I get lost off the page here, but I'm uh, I'm going to uh, cut forward so you don't have to watch me sketching nothing. Getting the fingers in there. If you struggle drawing fingers and hands, by the way, you've just got to practice loads. You've really got to practice doing them things that you can't do very well with art. And the reason you're not very good at it is because you're not practicing them enough. Uh, nobody wants to hear that. And we've all got it. We've all got them things that, it, that we go, oh, God, I hate doing hands or feet or whatever it is, you know, or legs or, you know, that's the stuff you should be practicing. That's the stuff you've got to practice more. Okay, got, in, got that nostril in, just making them lines a bit firmer so I can see what it'll be like when it's inked. Sometimes when you see me go over lines, it's not just that I'm, it's not just my OCD going crazy. Sometimes it is. Sometimes my OCD is going crazy, but sometimes it's because if I can see the line heavier, I've got a better idea of what it's going to look like when there's black ink on it. <coughs> so. See, I'm just rubbing out these bits because I want to see how it's going to be when it's complete. <clears throat> okay, so I'm getting a boundary box in now. I like boundary boxes. Boundary boxes, or both sides. You see, I did a belt on him down there, but that's going to go. <clears throat> um, boundary boxes, boundary circles, different shapes. If you've seen the Clockwork Orange poster ever, you know, it's a triangle. That character's coming out of a triangle. I've never used a triangle before. I don't fancy it myself, but use a shape, you know, different shape for, for a boundary box. Um, I love using circles. I slightly overuse them. Circles are not great to fit on a page, a printed page, if you're going to do a book or anything like that. Um, rectangles are much, much better because they are much neater on the page. Okay, getting into the letters now. Gonna drop some letters down this uh, bottom left hand side. Get the cute in. This is the kind of cute I love doing. This is essentially, it's the same style as a window down panel piece on a train. You lose the bottom of it. You deliberately lose the bottom of it and uh, I've always loved them kind of pieces. If I was to paint letters now, which I don't think I would anymore, I, don't, I can't imagine that I'd be painting letters ever again. I paint characters now. I enjoy painting characters. But if I was ever to paint letters again, this is probably what I'd do. Thing is, you can't go on a on a production wall and paint letters that vanish off the bottom unless everybody's doing it and you can't really do it anyway because that's not what a wall piece is designed to do wall pieces are essentially designed to flow I mean you can do all kinds of stuff with the space and the negative space and all that kind of stuff and, and the composition and everything but you can only do it in conjunction with everybody else that's on the wall on the production wall as a whole you can't just sort of do your own thing I mean some writers do some writers just do their own thing but then it's not so much a production wall as a bunch of writers all painting on a wall you know you want something that hangs together with some level of congruity so I just want to get this T right this T is not right at the moment can you see that it's not quite dynamic enough the dynamics of it are not quite there and I don't want to set about inking until it is correct otherwise I really will look at it and go oh, duh should I just spent more time? That's annoying. I'll be annoyed. Who was it? Dave Gibbons and Mike McMahon, who used to illustrate for 2000 AD, they used to say this thing, which is, um, the thing is you've got to take your time and do this properly. Because when you've done it, 
and they were talking about 2000 AD as well, which is, you know, them comics, we still got them comics from 50 years ago, and they'll be around for 50 more, easy. Uh, if it's going to be around that long, you've got to get it as right as you possibly can. And that's how I feel about art, really. Get it as right as you possibly can, and get it right at the sketch stage. Because, like I say, you know, correcting when you're inking is uh, much more hazardous. You know, we've all done it. But unless you're using paint, you've got to be very careful. Do anything using paint. Paint coat is not over paint. Easy peasy. Yeah, this marker is still not quite right. I'm just giving that a bit more length there. A bit more uh, upwards curve on it. That's better. It's a little bit better. It's just a bit more aesthetically pleasing that. Since it's going to be a bit of a feature. Sorry, my chair is creaking like normal. Okay. There we go. Getting the end of the marker in. Yeah, that's too long on the E. Get rid of that. So what you want now is some bubbles off that, really. That's what I want to do. Get some bubbles off that. Sort of bubbly cloud. And I want that. That's going to break the uh, the frame as well. It's nice when you break frame. So I've got, I've got him breaking frame with his nose and his marker. And now these bubbles are going to break frame as well. Just break the frame a little bit. It's a nice effect. Again, it adds to your depth as well. Adds to the depth of your uh, of your illustration. If you make a frame and then you have a character sort of loom out of it and break it, you know, using using very basic two dimensional uh, two dimensional. What am I talking about? Two two dimensional illustration. Uh, you just give something a bit more depth than it had in the first place. This is me trying to work out if I'm going to do scales at the back here. Like I say, in the end, I decided uh, I decided I would, but I done it with colour. Decided on his tattoos here. Yeah. I've got a really beautiful colour for tattoo. I've got that sort of greeny, turquoisey ink. That you that you get, but the thing is, when I put tattoos in the secondary light source, which that will be, it'll be reflected light, all that, uh, it won't be that colour, <laughs> which is a bit of a pain because I love using that because it's the colour of tattoos, colour of real tattoos. This is just really all this will be rubbed out, but I need to get it placed myself so that I know it will fit on the day. Because that, interestingly, is stuff that I will do on the hoof. I have made a mess of it in the past, but very rarely. I pretty much know what I'm doing when it comes to that sort of stuff. I will get rid of the pencil. Because obviously pencil, if you're using spirit marker, you must not use alcohol markers, alcohol-based inks, over pencil. Because what you do is you make the pencil indelible. As soon as you put it over the top, then you'll never be able to rub it out. So you're stuck with filthy pencil underneath your... Uh, underneath your colour. If you're just doing roughs and stuff, it doesn't really matter, but if you're doing a nice finished piece, it can look really grotty. Again, if you're looking for a really dirty look, not so bad, not such a bad thing. But I'm not really looking for a dirty look on my stuff in this way. My stuff is quite clean in this way. So, dirty is no good for me. I'm slightly overdoing the bubbles here. I've overdone it. I'm overdoing it. Again, you know, avoid the urge to overdo it. I'm going to have to go back and rub this out now because I've overdone it. You don't want that much. Less is more. Less is more. I tell myself it all the time. Less is more. Still break my own rules, obviously. Everything happens in the moment. There you go, that's better. 
like I'm just getting rid of them pencil lines so I can see what I'm doing. What I don't want to do is ink any pencil lines accidentally. When I really get into it, I don't want to ink pencil lines that are not supposed to be there. Still not very happy with that T. Yeah, there you go, because it's too long. I'll do another couple of corrections on that yet. And then you'll see it's still not right. You see it? There you go, that angle, that's the one. That is the right angle for that dynamic. Finally got it. Worth doing it, right? It's worth doing it. Because once it's in there, you go, ah, that's it. I'm happy with that. That's fine. Now I can press on. I'm going to slightly adjust the angle on that, the back of his chin there. Whether it makes any difference, I don't know really, but it did for me. Now there is a problem with his left eye, not the left as we look at it, his left rather than our left, if you see what I mean. The eye furthest away from us, it's not quite right. It's It should be slightly lower and I will adjust that in the inking because I don't actually spot it until it's in the inking. So uh, sometimes that is just a thing, you know. I would rather not be doing that, but at that point I was like, no, I'm I'm started now. I'm I'm on the way. So so now I'm going around all these lines because I need to see them firmer. I want to see them firmer in so that I can be sure that this hand stands up to my scrutiny and that I'm happy with it. I'm actually really happy with it. I really like this hand. Okay, get the thickness of his glasses in, decide how thick they're going to be. They're not going to be very thick, they're going to be very thin framed comparatively. Should do a big pair of them. <coughs> really thick Michael Caine in, in Alfie type glasses, there's an old reference. I think you've probably got to be uh, at least 50 to have got that reference. <laughs> 